Academic work requires a significant expenditure of energy. Research and writing can be intellectually, emotionally, and even physically demanding, leaving us feeling drained, exhausted, unmotivated, and with even a diminished sense of quality of life. So how can we find a way to engage with academic work over time where we're able to make consistent progress and we also are prioritizing our own well-being so that we show up to our work resourced, we can focus on developing a sustainable way of engaging with our work where we conserve our resources and we use them wisely. So this week in the Academic Writer Space, our co-working community where we co-work together in two-hour writing retreats all week long, our theme for the week is sustainability. So here are four ways you can work in a more sustainable way. Number one, build an external infrastructure. It takes a lot of energy to track all of the things that you need to do. And when you're using your mind to figure out, when am I doing that? What's happening here? And you're constantly tracking everything that needs to be done. It's extremely energy inefficient. Consistent progress and a sense of well-being and quality of life don't just happen by accident. We actually need to take all that stuff swimming around in our head and document it on paper and make a humane, thoughtful plan of what are you doing when? When are you directing your energy, your attention, your focus, your concentration towards certain activities? What times of day? Where is there time for you to replenish and settle your nervous system and regroup and rest so that you show up to your work resourced? So take time, at least every 24 hours, to think through what am I doing tomorrow and is that a humane flow for the day? Number two, practice environmental alignment. Once you've created your plan of what you're going to be doing the next day, take a little bit of time to get the materials, digital and physical materials that you're going to need to do that work. What articles do you need? Do you wanna print a copy of a draft because you're gonna edit on paper? What programs do you need the passwords for? Separating finding things from doing things is much more energy efficient so that you can show up to your work where what you need is already there. You don't have to search through a folder to find the right file. You're going to be much more likely to be able to move right into work and spend less energy trying to force yourself, trying to motivate yourself to transition in because when what you need is already there, it's like the car is parked on a downhill slope. Number three, check your pace and intensity level frequently. When we have long to-do lists, there's a lot of pressure, we have deadlines, a common coping strategy that we use is to increase the pace that we're working at and to become intense. In a sense, use more energy, more force than is necessary to get things done. Over-controlling is an example of that. Being perfectionistic is, a, is an example of that. So throughout the day, track and check, is the pace that I'm working at, is the intensity level that I'm working at, is that compatible with the work that I'm trying to do? Is it compatible with working effectively? Am I going to overly tax myself and use too many resources by moving at this pace with this level of intensity? So it's kind of like a volume dial. You might notice that you're working and you're really intense and trying to get things done. And then what often happens, by the way, is that we flip to the other side where we completely shut down and are unable to work because really we've exhausted our resources and our system shuts down because it's trying to recover. So make it a priority to track yourself during the day. Is my pace and intensity level, is this sustainable for me? Is this gonna help me make progress? And have a sense of well-being. And you can turn that dial down whenever you need to. Number four, practice monotasking. It takes so much energy to be multitasking and we're not very good at perceiving how much energy and how taxing it is to us to be doing that. But think about it, all that switch tasking and moving in between things and then trying to hold in your mind, oh yeah, but don't forget to finish that email and then go back over here and do this, all of that tracking is exhausting for us and it's very hard on us. So uh, important practice is to sit down to work with a list of clear, discrete tasks and then to practice surrendering your attention and energy and focus 
to the one task where you're working on one thing at a time. So much kinder to the human who's showing up to work. So much less overwhelming for you to move into your work when you know I'm only working on this. I can relax my energy so that I, I can engage effectively, but I'm not turning up the pace and intensity and becoming overly activated. So it's going to be a really great week, everybody. I'm really looking forward to this theme of sustainability. I think it's incredibly important. To me, it seems like a meta theme in our community. How do we develop a sustainable pathway of engaging with our academic work and honestly also with living our lives? So I will see you all on Zoom. And if you have never tried co-working in the academic writer space, we offer 24 live two-hour writing retreats every single week. And it is a container for real productivity, and we support you to have a quality of life while you're making progress. I look forward to seeing you all on Zoom, everybody.